So hello and good evening, this is Red Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today I'm going to answer a question that was asked to me on Twitter and it was from Jack that he was wondering what is the difference between direct query and import and when he should use which one. So in case you don't know, stay tuned because that's what we will be talking about today. And um, to begin with, let's start with what is those things. So we start with import. When you import uh, a source in Power BI, what you're basically doing is loading in the data into the model, into the Power BI file. And that happens with most of the sources. So for example, when you're connecting to Excel or CSV or you know the most common data sources most of the time except for SQL you actually import the data in the model. With a few sources you have the possibility to use direct query. So what is it? Direct query is basically a way for you to connect to the source without actually importing the data. So every time Power BI is doing calculations and transformations and showing you visuals, it's actually going back to the source, picking up the data and bringing it back to Power BI. So the Power BI file does not contain any data whatsoever. So that is the major difference. Now, which data sources can you connect with direct query? The, there is a list. I have my cheat sheet here, but you can find it online. I mean, there's a lot of documentation around it. And I'm going to name the ones I found, which is SQL, of course. And you have Azure SQL database. You have Oracle Teradata. You have Amazon Redshift. You have Impala and Snowflake. Now, you don't need to remember this, really, because when you connect to Power BI, if it is a direct query option, you will see it. So you will have the possibility to choose between direct query or import. So why remember it, right? So you can see it when you're actually importing the data into the model. So let's uh, start with what we actually wanted to talk about today, and is what are the benefits and what are the limitations of direct query? When should you use it? And uh, the benefits for, uh, the main benefit of using direct query is basically the ability to work with large data sets. Um, you are not importing the data into Power BI, you are working back on the source and uh, it is uh, much easier to do it using direct query. You have also, the data will be live because, you know, when you are doing an import, you're just importing a snapshot of how your database or your data source looks like. Uh, when you're doing direct query, because you're connecting back to the source all the time, you're always working with live data. So there is also a huge um, benefit if that is important for you. And there was actually the limitation that we have with the free um, with the free license where you can only have one gigabyte. Now that has been removed. I don't know if it still applies for uh, direct query. I don't think so. So let's say it doesn't. If you know something else, just let me know in the comment box. Um, so those are the benefits. Now. Direct query has many, many, many limitations. Uh, the fact that you are working with a large uh, data set, it has its cost. And uh, one of the biggest limitations is actually the performance of your model. Um, it will depend on the source and how fast your source is, how your source is performing. So make sure you check that if you are planning to use direct queries so you will not end up with a very slow model. You know, everything that loads, I would say, takes longer than 10 seconds, 20 seconds is, is a lot. And, and I think your users will uh, complain if you create such models, so make sure that your source is able to refresh fast enough for them. Another thing you have to remember is that if you publish the model to Power BI service and it doesn't refresh in a few minutes, it will time out. That means that you will not be able to refresh your model at all. So 
make a small check, publish to the service and check if it's actually going to refresh or not before you put a lot of work into it. So if we continue with the performance issue, it also not depends only about the source, but of course also how many users are going to be interacting with your model. And not only that, if you have row level security, it will affect it even more. So let's say that you have 100 users and you have row level security. That means that you're actually limiting your users to see only data that they are have access to. It could be based on geography or based on customer or you know there are all kinds of um, settings you can have. But that means that if you have row level security, perhaps those 100 users have their own um, filtering of the data and that means that you will have to query that source 100 times just to be able to pull the same data and that will have a huge impact on data performance. So make sure you check um, if you have row level security, if you're planning to have it, how it performs on your data source. Uh, another limitation is that you cannot have more than 1 million rows back into your Power BI model. So after you've done all your calculations, you cannot return more than 1 million rows into Power BI. It will not allow to do it, it's a limitation that they have. That does not mean that your model can only be, your source can only be a million rows. You can do transformations that move 10 million rows, no problem. But the result of that transformation cannot be bigger than one million row because otherwise you won't be able to put it into Power BI. It won't import. So that is something to take into consideration. Um, more limitations. Uh, you are allowed, all the tables on your model can have to be from the same database. That means that you cannot combine sources. You cannot have uh, your SQL database and then say, okay, I'm going to pull this metadata from Excel. You won't be able to. It has to come everything from the same source. So if you want to use that Excel source, you have to import it into your SQL uh, database. Huge limitation. Uh, you have uh, to be careful with your Power Query transformations. Uh, they cannot be too complex. What, what that complex means, it depends on so many factors. You have to test it. But uh, you can now go overboard doing all kinds of transformations because basically the source will not be able to cope with that. You have also a limitation for relationships. So that means that um, you can only have single relationships. You know when you go back to the Power BI you have the relationships and then you have the single direction or both directions. You have one arrow or both arrows. In this case you can only have one direction. And uh, again this is a performance uh, reason. So you can work of course and do DAX um, measures with just single direction uh, and your relationships is actually makes the model more effective. Again, that's what they are trying to, to do. So it, it is actually not a bad thing because you will be forced to learn a little bit more complex tax calculations to be able to manage just single relationships. But if you are not very advanced on DAX yet, that is a, a huge limitation because it takes a little bit of knowledge to handle tables that way. Um, a, a big one, another big one is time intelligence. No time intelligence allowed. So no year to date, month to date and you know, all those kind of cool calculations that we used to do and we use very often, you are not allowed to do that in Power BI, you won't be able to. And not only that, there are also other DAX limitations and the reason for those limitations to be in place is again performance. Um, what happens is the Power BI team is doing that without us knowing. Sometimes when you create measures you get an error that is basically, it doesn't say it like that, but what it means is that you're not allowed to do this because you know your measure is so ineffective that 
it will kill your model basically. So they have put limitations on what kind of calculations we can actually do with DAX. When it comes to DAX query, they have narrowed that even more. So there are certain DAX functions that you are not allowed to use. And the reason for that is just because they want your model to be um, fast. So it, it performs well, otherwise your users will hate your Power BI report. So th there are reasons for that. You can actually remove that limitation if you go to options and then you go to uh, direct query. You can uncheck the uh, the limitation. I really recommend you not to do it because the reason they have it is to make your model as effective as possible. You will have to work uh, uh, find the workaround to your DAX measure to make it as effective as possible. If you are not able to, perhaps you have to consider doing an import anyhow. So these are the benefits and limitations of direct query. As you can see, there are many. So most of us, I think they just uh, import the data when possible. If you have large data sets, you will have to cope with all these limitations to be able to create your Power BI model. So if I forgot any other limitation or benefit, just please let us know in the comment box. We'd love to hear it. And uh, I hope that the video was useful. Um, if you like it, just subscribe. I publish uh, Power BI videos three times a week. That would be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Friday, we have it especially for DAX functions in case you want to learn more about it. So have a great evening and uh, bye.